Hey guys, Claire here, and in today's video, we're going to talk about all things Harry and Meghan. In my last video, we spoke about Prince Harry's security case, then we soon got an update on another case that Prince Harry is currently battling. The Duke of Sussex and Sir Elton John are to be given secret documents from the Levinson Inquiry to support their phone hacking claim against the Daily Mail. Ministers approved a request from six high-profile figures to unseal documents submitted as part of a public inquiry into hacking more than a decade ago. The documents outline payments made to private investigators by both the Daily Mail and the Mail on Sunday. Now this is certainly going to have a lot of people within the Daily Mail and Mail on Sunday tabloid family very, very nervous. Now, while we're still talking about Prince Harry and his many UK court cases, there were a few revelations from the other security case for Prince Harry. And I feel like while there's people who will say, well, oh my God, Harry, give it up, dude. It's not safe over there. Be in America, live your life, enjoy traveling around the world leave the UK at the back burner. But here's the thing. I feel like with the book, interview, docuseries, and each and every court case, there are a lot of things that have been exposed of the inner workings of the palace. In this security case, we found out that, well, the NYPD backed up Harry and Meghan's claims, so there's one letter has surfaced from the NYPD about the paparazzi who were accused of chasing Prince Harry and Meghan Markle during a visit to Manhattan last spring. The letter was part of a British court case. It said the paparazzi used cars, scooters and bicycles to follow the royal couple and force their police escort to take evasive action to avoid being hit or trapped. Now, that letter even said there was enough evidence to arrest two people for reckless endangerment. At this point, there have been no arrests, but we did reach out to the NYPD, and they say they have increased security protocols for Harry and Meghan. They referred us to the district attorney about possible charges. We also found out that Harry and Meghan wanted to bring Archie and Lilibet to the UK before Queen Elizabeth died. Now, there are so many of people in the UK press who are like, oh, Harry and Meghan are just so horrible. They don't want to bring the kids over. Poor Charles. The Queen didn't get to have enough time with her great-grandchildren. And these court cases are showing that, well, the members of the media, of the UK media in particular, don't know what they're talking about. Because they say one thing, and these court cases, the new revelations, say something else entirely different. Also, we found out just how huge of a role William played in the breakdown of Harry and Meghan's relationship with the firm. So those who pay attention to what goes on within the palace and Harry and Meghan, we're familiar with the names. If you've read the book, you know, The Fly <laughs> and whatnot. We've heard about Jason Knopf, we've heard about Simon Case, and this case showed even more details. William has been a key player in all of this. And I feel like he is so incandescent with rage about Harry because Harry has really consistently been exposing how William works. William doesn't do the dirty work himself. Oh, no, no, no. He has key players within his Kensington Palace staff that does the dirty work for him. And Harry's been exposing that. Before, I feel like a lot of us knew, well, Charles and Camilla, they like to play dirty, you know, they like to brief. But these revelations really show that William is no different. He is just as sneaky, just as underhanded. Really strongly about this. So I have my cards on the table to start with. I like Harry. I can't help Well, you me. look like Harry. Oh, thank you. Well, he looks like me because I'm older. But I, I've just always had a soft spot for him. Yes, he's made major mistakes. I don't think he should have, as it were, ratted on his family. But, but he, it was his sort of answer back after years of press intrusion. So that's, that's, I just quite like him. Can't help it. I know a lot of people don't like him. Yeah. And I have a lot of sympathy to his wife. And I think some of the hatred is racially motivated. Let's get that out of the way. This was a guy who was born a royal. Right? He could do nothing about who he was born as. And so he cannot control 
the impact of that on his security mm. throughout his life. Not just he, a royal, Diana's son. Diana's son, and of course he sees this totally understandably, partly I think through the lens of the awful death of his mother and the yeah. fact that she was relentlessly pursued by paparazzi. Harry, even though he stepped away from royal duties, is still the son of the king. And not just that, but unlike you, Unlike Lynn, as far as I know, and certainly unlike me, this is a man who has put his life on the line for the country in Afghanistan. It seems to me totally wrong that he doesn't get the same treatment, not preferential treatment, but the same treatment as his brother. Okay. This week we saw a photo of Meghan having a blast with girlfriends on a ski trip. And from the caption of Heather, it is likely that Harry and the kids were also there enjoying the family fun. Now, Meghan and Harry aren't the only ones having a little downtime. Apparently, Queen Consort Camilla will be taking a little vacation after working so hard because smiling and waving and taking photos a couple of times a month is exhausting work. And you know what? With the way the things are looking for the House of Windsor, I don't blame Camilla. Oh dear. Seems like it's all falling apart for the British royal family. It now appears to be led by an adulterer. It's weird. I thought they were supposed to be the epitome of a good upstanding British family. A family for us peasants to look up to. A Christian family. Well, I'm not sure what Christian values they uphold. Prince William's behaviour has been very odd. He's supposed to be the more dutiful brother, but seems to be dropping out of things at the drop of a hat. He dropped out of his godfather's memorial 45 minutes before it started. Apparently for personal reasons. But it was only a few minutes from where he lives. This week's social media and mainstream media has been rampant with all sorts of conspiracy theories about where is Kate to the point that where is Kate trended on Twitter. I mean, the conversations surrounding Kate, William and the recently deceased Thomas Kingston has been interesting, a little crazy, at a fever pitch high. The conversations about William's possible connection to Thomas Kingston, the way Prince William and Kensington Palace has been handling the Kate questions. I mean, I've seen so many conspiracy theories about what's wrong with Kate, where she is, is she even alive, mental health problems. It's been insane to the point where you're seeing mainstream media picking up the story and also content creators who focus on like pop culture but not necessarily royal family related content have joined in and asking the question, where is Kate? Now the most interesting part for me is that a lot of people have been talking about the stark differences between the privacy of Kate versus the privacy of Meghan Markle and that that is what I'm most interested in. Also, as people were saying, you know, if she really is just recovering from surgery and the palace is protecting her from the press, then they argued that show is a double standard in the royal family, right? And that's because Meghan Markle previously said that when she was dealing with suicidal thoughts, she was actually denied care from the firm because it wouldn't be good for the institution, saying reps told her that there was nothing they could do to protect her. And that's in line with claims Prince Harry's made that the family refused to help the two of them as they dealt with relentless and racist tabloid attacks. But this is now Kate is apparently getting incredibly private care. A bunch of walls are being put up around her to prevent any tabloid from seeing her, which is why you have people saying things like the last two months have shown everyone that the royal family could have protected Princess Diana and Meghan Markle. They chose not to. And with all this, people just slamming the royal family and the institutions around it. And again, people saying at the very least, it's odd, noting that even the king has been photographed since we learned that he's dealing with cancer treatment. And so with all of the theories and the outrage spreading online this morning, you had a spokesperson basically telling HuffPost that Kensington Palace made it clear in January the timelines of the princess's recovery and we'd only be providing significant updates. That guidance stands and still claiming that she is doing well. But to the growing number of conspiracy theorists, that kind of just sounded like the palace saying, we told you, we locked Kate in a dungeon. She remains in said dungeon. What do you want from us? Right? And so with this, you had people saying a statement like this is exactly how you stir up more speculation. Which I totally agree with. Kensington Palace's handling of this entire situation with Kate has been horrible. Thomas Kingston's cause of death has been revealed. The British financier was found dead on Sunday at his parents' home in Gloucestershire. We're also learning about the morning before his death. He ate lunch with his parents, followed by a dog walk. Then, after Kingston went missing, his father forced his way into a locked building, discovering his son's body. This comes five years after he said, I do with the British royal. Her family given a statement to People this week. 
Tom was an exceptional man who lit up the lives of all who knew him. His death has come as a great shock to the whole family, and we ask you to respect our privacy as we mourn his passing. Pippa Middleton, whom Kingston reportedly dated, stepped out for his wedding in 2019, alongside Prince Harry and Meghan Markle, and the late Queen Elizabeth and Prince Philip. Meanwhile, the royal family reeling amid multiple health battles. Yes. 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 That's Prince William accepting flowers on wife Kate Middleton's behalf, as Kensington Palace chimes in on the conspiracy theories surrounding her recovery, saying in a rare statement, the Princess of Wales continues to be doing well. As we have been clear since our initial statement in January, we shall not be providing a running commentary or providing daily updates. You know, William's priority is and has always been his family, and we know he's taken the last couple of weeks out of royal duties to be there to support Catherine as she's recovered in hospital and returned home and also look after those three young children. Of course, as Kate's recovery from her abdominal surgery last month, King Charles is receiving cancer treatment. I think we might see the King to revert to some of what happened during lockdown, taking taking calls on Zoom if needs be, um, which means he's still able to fulfill his obligations as head of state, even if he can't be there for those face-to-face -face meetings. We know he's a workaholic. We know he's dedicated to what he does, but perhaps for possibly months, he is just going to have to take it a little bit easy. Bloody voicemail again. Kate, hi, uh, just a quick one for me. Where the fuck are you, babe? No, seriously, it's getting a little bit gone, girl, and we're getting a bit freaked out over here. You know, we said 2024, go big or go home, not go missing. That was never actually an option that we discussed. So if you could just call me back, please, your highness, your majesty. Thank you so much. What? No, she hasn't gone to get a BBL. What's a BBL? A Brazilian butt. Oh, God, you know, you might be onto something. Because she never lived down the whole Pippa rear of the year situation. What kind of a woman does squats before their own sister's wedding? That's my question. Tells you everything you need to know about that family. Oh, she's got me. Kate, hi. My darling, it's so good to hear your voice. Honestly, I thought you were going to end up as a chapter in Harry's next book, and nobody wants that, do they? <laughs> What's it? Is Will annoyed? Is Will with me? No. Darling, Will only realized you were missing about a day ago, which is odd because you have been gone for about two months. That's just kind of the case with everyone. Everyone only sort of noticed the other day. Uh, and that's what I said. You do so much. It's crazy that they didn't, because you do do so much. And just, if anyone does ask, remind me again what it is that you do do, just so I can... No, you're right. Now is not the time and the place. What have I been doing on my side? Well, I did dress Pippa up and send her out as you to as a decoy for the press, but they did clock on straight away. Yeah, the... To others, I've been saying, uh, darling, she's not disappeared. She's just skinny. You should try it. But they're not really going for that either but i'm glad you've been resting I'm, i didn't know if they did retreats in magaluf but it is good to hear some time away from the monster-in-law <laughs> your words not mine your words not mine anyway rest up and we'll chat prince of wales he lives just what three miles from the front door of the chapel wasn't able to go for personal reasons. So a lot of people really concerned about what is going on in the Wales' household at the moment. Well, and, and understandably so, when you consider the context, we were told that William's absence had nothing to do with the news about Tom Kingston. It had nothing to do with the King's health. And as we know, the King's just weeks into a shock cancer diagnosis and undergoing treatment. And in fact, the King was seen leaving Windsor an hour or so before the service to come to London, we understand, for meetings and or treatment. So we weren't expecting to see him at yesterday's memorial. But we were not only expecting to see the Prince of Wales, we were expecting to hear from him. In fact, his name had been published on the order of service. Now, you know, Isabel, a name and that a royal pulling out an hour before an event, it simply doesn't happen. They do not like to let people down. I mean, they're never late, let alone pulling out of something. So to pull out of something for an important um, family member, as I said, it was William's godfather, was absolutely unusual. When you put that in the context of the Princess of Wales, who, let's not forget, hasn't been seen since Christmas Day, um, who's undergone clearly very serious surgery, we understand abdominal surgery, I mean, a 13-night stay in hospital, I think, indicates the severity of that, who hasn't been seen since, who we understand isn't going to be seen until well after Easter, it... It is obviously concerning. I must add that when we got that statement out of the palace, it was caveated with a subsequent sort of guidance memo that, you know, the Princess of Wales is continuing her recovery well, um, which I think is intended as reassurance for an obviously, um, I think it's not, it's not an overstatement to say panicked public. Okay, I've been wondering this for a minute, but how long do you guys think the UK media is going to give William before they start eating this man alive? Like, how much rope are they going to give him? Because at this point, if we're being honest, 
he's embarrassing them. They have gone out of their way to paint William in the best possible light to try to make him look like he'll be an amazing king. He's a great heir. He's intelligent. He's stoic. He's reliable. And he's proven to be none of those things. Like this man cannot stop screwing up. There's absolutely no reason for him to have missed his godfather's memorial service because allegedly Kate is doing well. Hell, she just went on holiday with them. Let them tell it. So she's doing good. It wasn't Charles, nor was it the royal family member that just passed away. And let's not forget that that man passed away on Sunday. So this man would have had plenty of time to have figured something out if he couldn't go. So why did he pull out 45 minutes before he was supposed to be there? Can you imagine working for a company and having to give a presentation only to call out 45 minutes prior and say that it's a personal matter and still think you're going to keep your job? But this man can. Like that man's in-laws, the one that passed away, was in the crowd. Not only is what William did incredibly unprofessional it's incredibly disrespectful to all of the foreign royals that made time to be there not to mention he gave andrew his time to shine i thought he didn't like andrew i thought that he wanted andrew just kicked out of all of that why would he allow him to have his time to shine by not showing up like they've created a monster in william if we're if we're being honest but when are they going to completely take off these kid gloves because look, let's not play. William William makes time when William wants to show up. Because he had no problem kicking it with Tom Cruise. Him and Tom just buddy-buddy had a great time. Laughing, kikiing, and everything. Or when he made a fool of himself at the Baptist. Uh, he, that was short notice. He decided to show up. So you can show up for this, but you can't show up for your own godfather? Like, let that sink in. You can show up for this, but not for your godfather's memorial service. Like, they need to take off the kid gloves and eat this man alive because he's he's doing too much. The month of March is surely going to be interesting for Kensington Palace and Prince William. Princess Anne continues to do her thing, but she doesn't really get as much media attention. Sophie and Edward don't really get that much media attention, but they're also on vacation. You have Camilla going on vacation. Charles continuing to do a lot of his work via Zoom calls. So... Prince William is going to have to weather this storm on his lonesome. And with the way that he's handled things thus far, <laughs> it's hard to believe that he'll be able to navigate this any better. Only time will tell. Daily Mail, the gift that keeps on giving. Royal aides are confused about the social media focus on the royal family. Let's explain to them why. Royal aides, flunkies, hello, if you're watching this, this might help you out. So Kate was described as having planned surgery, which couldn't have been planned because we all know she had appointments booked the week after and the week after that, some of them overseas. So call us a bit dim, a bit dense, a bit stupid. Obviously it wasn't planned if appointments were booked. Maybe... It was planned, but it came early. So just tell us that. Also, lack of evidence going into hospital, coming out of hospital, apart from a fake aid, PA, leaving with no sign of Kate. Parents haven't been seen. Literally no message from her that's that's kind of um, digital. So no video, no photograph, um, no thanking of well wishes for cards, gifts, etc. Just an update saying she's doing well. Not good enough. More information needed. Charles, loads of leak in, leaks in the European press about what type of cancer it is and how serious it is. That, that, that information is coming from somewhere. Someone's taken a big load of cash to spill the tea. So the reason, Kensington Palace, the reason there's loads of speculation on social media is because there's either no information coming out from you or wrong information coming out from you or not full information coming out from you. So just be honest. The taxpayers pay for this family. We deserve some courtesy and honesty. Okay, UK media wrap up. Uh, yesterday, two things happened. Harry lost his High Court appeal uh, with regards to UK security when he comes to the UK. 
There was also confirmation that Harry and Meghan were recklessly chased by a paparazzi through New York, police confirmed, and potentially two people to be arrested. Now, the number of media outlets, number of haters, derangers who went on about this being false and it wasn't a car chase and they were just being dramatic, where are you now? And surprisingly, you all reported on this yesterday, so you had a story on it. Even the fact they mentioned it uh, surprised me because the commentary around this car chase was very, very negative and full of lies. Which brings me back here to the front pages of the UK papers today, Thursday, 29 February. Uh, I mentioned there of Harry losing his High Court appeal. I knew they would jump on that. They love to jump on anything like that. And then in surprise news, the Daily Mail, very shocking by this, uh, what is going on with the rules? And it's not Harry and Meghan on the front or even Prince Andrew. It's Kate and Willie. Is this the turning? Ooh. Daily Telegraph, just a very small story. They're talking about Harry's legal bill, not about anything behind it or the car chase. Uh, but let's look at the top of the Daily Telegraph and they're supporting JK Rowling. I'll leave that there. The Times again, Harry faces one million legal bill. The scum, Harry's one million legal fight is a waste. Daily Mirror, picture of Harry Meghan, of course. Body blow, Harry loses security cash fight, hitting hopes of healing rift. Oh dear. In the Metro, this is the free newspaper you get at the train station. Uh, bombshell ruling for Harry, you are not that special. That's very kind, Metro. Not. And lastly, I'll leave you with this. Harry yesterday released this video as well. It's a busy day for Harry yesterday, and it was for the World Child Awards nominations. Now, I understand that a lot of people feel like Harry and Meghan sold out the royal family. I personally believe they told their truth and the truth wasn't liked because sometimes the truth isn't liked. And I do believe their feelings are valid and I do believe the UK media has a lot to answer for. But just putting that aside, I could imagine the UK media and royal family and the British public would be shitty if Harry and Meghan were really nasty people who could who were just doing things for themselves. But everything they do and have done has been for other people. It's not for themselves. Now the derangers and haters will say they just do things for themselves, but everything they are involved in is helping others, which is what people love the royal family for. It's very confusing. And I think I've done enough videos now to explain, well, have the comments explain why everybody dislikes Meghan Markle. But again, everything she has done has been good for other people. But you know what, I'll leave you with this headline of the mail. I think if this article is anything to go by, even the UK media are like, hang on a second, maybe we need to go back on our words because, mm, Prince Andrew, no. Where the heck is Princess Kate? Is she growing out her bangs? Did she get a BBL? Is she lost at the Wonka experience? If you're like me, over the last week, you have seen some of the craziest conspiracy theories regarding Catherine, the Princess of Wales. And just like me, the palace is sick of these theories and finally came out and gave a statement on behalf of the princess. A spokesperson for Catherine said, Kensington Palace made it clear in January, the timeline of the princess's recovery and that we'd only be providing significant updates. That guidance stands. They also reiterated that Catherine is doing well. Now, I know that's not as exciting as her being lost at the Wonka experience, but the palace did tell us everything we needed to know about her back in January. Ever since Will skipped that memorial service, there has been one question on everyone's mind. What exactly is the point of these people and giving them tax money for showing up places to get their picture taken? Uh, they could just, you know, not. Like, no. How about where exactly is the line between an individual's right to privacy and the public's right to know about the health and well being of people who they fund and are ostensibly kind of, sort of part of the government? I don't think we have that one. Well, not that either. All right, let me think. Um, I know, how the hell did Andrew get to be front and center leading everybody into church that day? No. <laughs> no. Then what? Where the heck is Kate? You know what? That is suspicious. Exactly. It really makes you wonder what's actually going on. Wait, what? What are you doing? None of that is happening. She had surgery. She is recovering. The woman deserves a little privacy, not your conspiracy theories. And why did you ask? You're the one with the wild accusations and conspiracy theories. I just referenced a 15 year old internet cartoon. I think it's pretty obvious I'm making jokes. So you're just making fun of a woman who had major abdominal surgery? Come on, you asked for this. Not really. 
took one look at Andy, that big stupid grin on his face while he was leading the family into church front and center, and you knew you had to change the subject, so you pulled out Old Faithful. Hey guys, where's the pretty one with the clothes? We miss her. It's not what we were doing. Because then we'd start asking those questions I was asking at the beginning of the sketch. Maybe you're a little bit right, but there's just one thing you're forgetting. Oh yeah? What's that? Look over there! Harry and Megan went skiing! You're not gonna look? No. Okay, we're just gonna go then. Alright, yeah, we'll revisit this in 10 to 14 days. Oh, are you still busy? Oh, no, we'll talk about other things. I just don't think you're gonna make it to Easter without demanding to see Kate again. Yeah, that's probably fair. Yeah, I know it is. Hey friend, hey, how's it going? Listen, all of this, all of this, like it is so embarrassing, I think, that Kensington Palace is losing to Buckingham Palace in this arena. Like when I say that like Williams aren't ready for prime time, someone said this in my comments and I forgot who it was and I agree, Williams not even ready to be Prince of Wales, let alone the monarch. Because what we're watching is Charles trying to drag the monarchy into the 21st century. And we're watching William trying to keep it in the 19th century. Now, I personally believe that he wants a reign that's very similar to Queen Elizabeth's, where he can be this stoic, unapproachable, aloof character that is beloved amongst the Commonwealth in the UK. The problem for William, however, is that Queen Elizabeth earned it. Now, I am not a fan of a fan of hers for real, for real. That woman put in the work. She did what she needed to do, not only to keep the monarchy alive, but to make it thrive. She knew she had to be seen. She was out and about doing all of these things to endear herself to the people to keep the monarchy alive. And William refuses to do literally anything. He won't do anything at all. And because we know how quickly misinformation can disseminate across the internet, you would think that they would have been ahead of this. And the fact that they weren't, just it just doesn't make any sense to me. Like, you would think that the heir to the throne would take this time where his father is out from cancer to be out and about calming the fears and concerns of the people of the UK, that he would be out there showing that the British royal family is still strong, even though people are out. And instead, this man is just not showing up. He's just not working. And it can't be Kate. Like, it can absolutely not be Kate. This woman had surgery, what, at the end of December or early January? We're going into March. No one believed in the first place that this man was sitting by her bedside. But there's no reason for you not to be able to work a few hours a day, a couple of days a week. Like, there's no reason that you can't do that. There's no reason for you to have missed your own godfather's memorial service. And I think it was the same godfather that he didn't go to his go to his funeral like this man just keeps messing up and when their reputation is their currency like it just I don't know what he's thinking like I don't know who he thinks he is but it's not going to work for him like because even if he becomes a monarch he's going to destroy it and George is probably never going to see that throne because his father is so utterly ridiculous we don't live in a time anymore where People can say, oh, you know, I want to keep, you know, my privacy. I don't want to, you know, have everybody in my business, but also forge this very strong parasocial relationship with me to the point where you feel like you should pay me to show up to events. You can't do both of those things. Like, it, do it doesn't work that way. And the fact that he thinks that is it's odd. Like, it's, a, it's so odd. This is why all of the members of the British royal family should have gotten degrees and education and things that would help them continue the monarchy instead of getting a useless piece of paper that they're never going to do anything with. King Charles's hot equerry shifts out of role in public eye following an online frenzy. This is Lieutenant Colonel Johnny Thompson. He is King Charles' royal equerry. He's actually been with the family since 2018 when he was first seen escorting the queen when she was in Scotland. But his rise to fame really came in 2022, not long after the Queen had passed away when he was seen escorting King Charles and the media took hold of just how very attractive this man was. To which he, to this day, has remained a very um, sought after man to look for while out with the monarch. Which makes it kind of interesting that last week it was announced that he would be taking on a ex more executive, less public facing role with the King and the Queen. 
Now it is being reported or at least understood that he has not enjoyed the public attention while doing high profile events with the King. But given the history that we have, particularly with King Charles, I can't help but wonder if that's truly what the case is. Going back as far as to when he was married to Princess Diana and her telling us that Charles resented the attention that she was received from the public and many others noting Charles's jealousy of the attention and the shine that Princess Diana seemed to have on everyone around her. And also in Prince Harry's book Spare where he mentions that Charles is really was really backseating Prince William and Kate when they first got together because again, they received so much attention. Even going as far as that with the day Charles and Kate had an engagement the same day that he has told her that she is not to be held a badminton or doing anything that might get her photographed and pull her onto the front cover and not him. So again, while they may state that maybe truly this is what Lieutenant Johnny Thompson actually wants, history makes me think it might be otherwise. They either need to um, atone for some things they've done, get some spiritual cleansing going on because this family is cursed. Cancer, dropping dead, one's missing, another one's missing. Mm -mm. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Also, hit that notification bell.